The title of my presentation is Philippine Cities and Communities Aspiring to be Resilient, Inclusive, and Sustainable Amidst Climate and Disaster Resilience. Uh, the anthropologist Arjun Apadurai said that what saves us as human beings is the capacity to aspire, the capacity to dream, and to take us capacity to dream for a better future, and importantly, focus on what we can do the present. Um, I'd like to thank Father Bobby for the support of this project. Um, In this presentation, I would like to argue that climate disasters have intensified globally and nationally, resulting in damages and losses in property, life, infrastructure, agriculture, and ecosystem health, and increasing the number of people looking for jobs, livelihoods, and food security. Part one of my presentation will look at the climate impact drivers like floods, Typhoon, storms, stellar rise, earthquakes that intensify the vulnerability and exposure of our people to climate and disasters. Part two, I'd like to talk about transdisciplinary innovations in climate and disaster resilience through collaborative public private people partnership. Or four. Part three, and I'd like to end by looking at the synthesis of what we're doing, and I'm arguing for a science-based, problem-focused, solutions-driven climate actions with the systems led. I would like to argue that we need to preach science policy practice next to us for climate and disaster resilience. The twin crisis of our time, climate and social inequality has intensified with the effects of pandemic and the political and economic resource uh, conflicts. The IPCC report of 2022 for South policy papers basically said that climate change has increased poverty, in, uh, widening inequality, and creating new vulnerability, especially for people who are vulnerable and unknown close to climate and disasters. The Philippines is always known to cut the statistics that they don't want to be known. So we're number one and uh, we're, we're number one in the World Risk Index. In 2019, we're nine, number nine. But because of the series of climate disasters, 2021, 22, and 1993, we're now also against them one. Um, extreme weather events, the climate and the social uh, inequality crisis drives human mobility, political economic plans, but also it provides us possibilities for recovery and resilience. 90% uh, of the regional greenhouse gas emissions in Southeast Asia come from five countries, Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia, and Indonesia. Climate Impact drivers. I want to specify this because when I work with local governments, oh, well, we have flooding disaster. We have this. I always say that climate impact drivers: floods, typhoons, sea level rise, subsidence, earthquakes. They drive the impact of the, of this um, hazards to displacement, poverty, and social inequality. You know, for uh, political economic resource conflicts either. Displacement in Marawi, the post to London, um, in Lake. Um, post this, uh, you can see here the post disaster situations in urban rural Mindanao. Uh, for those of my gender sensitive colleagues, look at the left hand side of the time. There's the father there is taking care of the baby. The son is cooking. So I was thinking, where is the mother? Perhaps she's she is washing. The clothes there in the river or by the artisan public. You can see here on the right the evacuation centers that always you know, um, prop up doctor against me. 
I'd like you to look at this figure. And why I argue that we should invest in prevention, mitigation, and transformative adaptation. You will see in column number one that Philippines is number three and the most uh, highly exposed country to climate disaster. Japan is number four. And, uh, but in the second column, in the most vulnerable countries, the top 15, Philippines or Japan is not there. But when you go to the third of the most 15 at risk countries, Philippines is still there in number three. Japan is not anywhere anymore. It's now 70. So what makes the difference? For me, it's the investment as well have it is the risk, you know, and you know, investment in preventive mitigative. You invest, you don't just respond. You just don't put up with plastic bags of iota after every typhoon. I always say, we're like Sisyphus, or maybe Nero playing the flute while Rome is burning. Every typhoon, the rock goes down, then you go again and you push the rock up. So I like this, uh, that's mainly my argument that I say, number one, basically, I, I'd say that disasters have doubled the past decades, and so are the damages and losses. And heightening the intersectionality of vulnerabilities in our economy, environment, and the social ecological system. But our ways of analyzing the climate and disaster impacts are still very disciplinary. But meanwhile, climate actions at the national and local level are very sectorally driven. So in Sikar PH, we propose three things. One, we need to naturalize the social sciences, socialize the humanities and, you know, and humanize the natural ecosystems, and we need to be problem focused, solutions driven with the systems. I didn't have much time, so I'll basically say, you know, so the development increases climate disaster. Yep, I said already. Uh, this is, you can see, I always say, we have to plan based on future scenarios, not on past things. You can see that Philippines is thinking three times since the liberalized than the global average. You will see the coastal inundation map of Metro Manila by 2050, and he's there in the top. By, um, so sea level rise is a big thing. So for me, central to bridging science policy practices are the three principles of transfer action research. Co-production of knowledge and stakeholders. Two, you cook for a capacities of scientists, professionals, and practitioners, leading to co-ownership, co-benefit, and co-stewardship. Yes, I know, I don't have much time. But the, I really believe that to understand Philippine climate change vulnerability, we have to do an intersectional analysis of vulnerability, adaptation, and resilience. Um, what are the six conditions of systems change? One, you should have the policies, the practices, and the resource flows. Anchored on power dynamics and the embedded mental sets of the actors. Uh, in Sitar page, we really believe our strategy is to achieving transformative adaptation, is to do the nexus of vertical, horizontal, and intersectional strategies in institutionalizing the resilience agenda at the local level with universities, LGUs, resilience councils, at the national level, uh, with the National Resilience Council, obviously the defense, climate change, the ALG, climate, and then also at the regional level and local values at the UNDRR can be underwrite. Um, the CICAR page is Consortium of Resilient Cities, you can do that. And in CICAR, we have, we distinguished into two kinds of innovation. Incremental innovation that doesn't change the systems, and then uh, transformative, contextually driven innovations for time. You don't have much time, you have, you have access to um, this, uh, all my presentations and all are all you can download on our website. You can see there you have three websites. So, uh, the transformative adaptations, and then we insert them in the local development planning. 
but it's very clear that we as social scientists, physical scientists, um, we produce socially inclusive, gender sensitive planning that is fit into the local planning. Uh, this is our model for public private public policy, where basically we bridge scientific knowledge and community practice and resiliency between research and science and the world community. Uh, the LGU, uh, the, the garbage sup supplies the science to the National Resilience Council and there's uh, Adapt a City program. Uh, this is the resilient program in partner cities where we give climate and disaster risk assessments, resilience workshops. Um, this is also here. In the, uh, basically, this is our last day out of the Ateneo Innovation Center with Mundel Sopatia and Ateneo uh, Atene Innovation Center and um, the school we propose the climate resilience of. We basically believe my lesson after that, Tegu City is very rich, of Tegu province very rich, but after three days, uh, there are three long lines, food, water, and electricity, and then communication. So we basically uh, created with uh, Ateneo Division Center Malay Observatory and the scientists here in Ateneo Malay, what we call the resilience, comfort the fuse next, food, energy, water, uh, security plug in the communication series. So we think that, you know, we should have community resilience learning hub, and we have the Chelsea Resilience Hub when it is called the tools of the communications, uh, the food, energy, and water. And we're working this now with a uh, uh, local government unit. So it's really that, you know, you have a state emergency center system, which basically becomes uh, the center for when there's a typhoon or flooding, people can go there, but you have all the um, elements that you need. So this is, um, Use Nexus in action in the world. Of course, Barangay and Nagas, we're in, you know, you have the aquaponics, you have the solar power, the potable water systems. So, this, and so this is my last slide right here. My key message is to scientists, policymakers, leaders, and civil society, private sector participants. We are at the crossroads of our life in this planet. There's our urgent need. Need one, we have to anticipate, uh, we have to be anticipatory on our climate action. Uh, we put the science and technology into prepare, adapt, and transform. But it seems to me, you know, right now the practice is also just respond. Um, number two, we have to collaborate and navigate um, the system. When we innovate, we have to collaborate. The system that we are in, and we are able to be. Uh, to bridge the scientific knowledge creation and mobilization for climate action and stakeholders. Number three, we need a strong commitment to invest in a risk-informed, resilience-driven planning and development leaders. And number four, we have to create a supportive conditions for transformative climate action. So convergent policy, practices, resource flows, uh, integrate and uh, harmonize the power in terms of our desire to have a better places, the connections and connectedness, our connectedness, a common vision of a better place, a better society, a better culture, and a better thing. So thank you very much. I think I like the end. This is my favorite um, African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, together. And uh, I'd like to thank the Sec Postal City Service Project for and Randy is our one and father now public first. And then um I welcome you to download anything in our website. Just acknowledge welcome. Thank you.